Now, outside of the mining, it's kind of inevitable, inevitable, there we go, that we start seeing integration between gaming and mining. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a huge fan of NFTs within video games. I've made this pretty clear. I probably have that boomer attitude surrounding it. I don't like microtransactions. Majority of the gaming community my age doesn't like microtransactions either. I try to avoid them at all costs. My games that I enjoy, that I like to play, are games where I get to earn everything in game, right? And basically, if you have microtransactions, it usually pushes away from that earning it in game. For example, if I play Halo Infinite right now, I just still have the vanilla free costume on my Halo Infinite character because you're not gonna catch me dead going ahead and paying for anything to advance the battle pass or whatever else. And I'm still at the top of the leaderboard so it doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> that being said, today what we're looking at is WCCF Tech article, going beyond GameStop's NFT platform, Loop Rings LRC bullish thesis revolves around an intricate balance between low transaction cost and overall security. This ties into a couple interesting platforms that we will discuss, but Loop Ring LRC, a decentralized exchange, saw the price of its native coin eviscerated recently amid a broad-based swoon in the crypto market. Nonetheless, while GameStop's partnership with Loop Ring over a bespoke uh, NFT platform bodes well for the coin's medium-term prospects, its bullish thesis goes much deeper. You can see the chart here it doesn't look super bullish to me, but let's continue on. As is evident from the chart above, Loop Ring's coin price is currently in a tailspin. Of course, the wider crypto market swoon over the past few weeks is likely to have played an important part in precipitating this price crash. Nonetheless, as Bitcoin's narrative undergoes a critical change, with its proponents now billing the world's premier cryptocurrency as a superior ge geopolitical hedge, look, that doesn't even, look, I know that a lot of people are probably like not understanding this shift. I'm actually su surprised that it's getting called out in this right now in WCCF Tech, which is not traditionally a cryptocurrency outlet. It's very important to understand that shift in Bitcoin's narrative and crypto's narrative back to financial autonomy, back to peer-to-peer -peer cashless system, removing governments, removing banks from the equation. I'm so happy to see that narrative shift back there and away from the, oh, it's a power hungry thing and we need to move to proof of stake and NFTs are awesome. Like, I get it. A lot of people made a lot of money off of NFTs. That's not a problem necessarily. I think inherently they are different services. And we did the whole commodity versus equity article. We've talked about that. And it's important to make those distinct distinctions. Ethereum, if it wants to be centralized, okay. That, that, we can go with that if that's where it wants to go. If it wants to be basically treated you know, closer to a stock with the VCs and the board members, etc., they can go over there and they can follow the stock market on their price increases and dumps, etc. But that is not what Bitcoin itself was created for in a lot of other cryptocurrencies when we discuss them. So can there be both within the blockchain space? I think so. But if we are talking about how cryptocurrency solves a lot of the issues that we've been seeing in the grander geopol geopolitical stage, then you really want to be looking at what Bitcoin does to solve that. And that puts, in my opinion, kind of things like Ethereum to the side, to the wayside, NFTs to the wayside, because there's just not as important right now, if that makes sense. So, I'm, I'm impressed that they called that out here and I just wanted to kind of go over it a little bit more, expound upon it. But with its proponents now billing the world's premier cryptocurrency as superior ge geopolitical hedge after it failed to serve as a viable inflationary hedge earlier this year amid soaring correlation with high beta growth stocks. There is a growing consensus that Bitcoin might be preparing for another major takeoff. After all, Bitcoin is now well off to its year date lows year-to-date lows moreover 
As inflow soars amid the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the bullish thesis for Bitcoin and for the rest of the crypto sphere in conjunction with its growing uh, conjunction is growing stronger. As far as loop rings intrinsic bullish factors are concerned, a former uh, initiation of a partnership with GameStop's NFT platform will serve as the next major bullish catalyst. As a refresher, Immutable X became an Ethereum Layer 2 partner for GameStop's Stops NFT platform back in early February, enabling zero gas fees for trading and minting NFTs in a carbon neutral environment. So, like I said, what was that narrative, right? What was the narrative of cryptocurrencies? And that line alone sums it up for the year 2020 to 2021. That line alone is important to understand. And I think it was going astray. But zero gas fees for trading and minting NFTs in a carbon neutral environment. Right? That's, that's the key points that were being pushed over and over and over again. And as we start to see essentially the everything break down in society, it's clear that that is not near as important, at least from my perspective, as the ability to transact with an individual without interferences of governments, etc. So it's kind of interesting there. And as that shifts, what we're seeing is a correlation in the charts. What we're seeing is Bitcoin outpacing Ethereum. What we're seeing is Bitcoin and privacy coins eventually here, I think, as well. Not financial advice, but Bitcoin and other like basically no emissions, no ICO drop, no airdrop, no VC funding coins and projects start to filter to the top. That cream is going to rise to the top and everything else will be below. And I think as long as we remain within kind of this uncertainty on the geopolitical stage, that is going to be a big point where in the charts we see kind of the superiority of these coins that ena enable people to transact without the interference of a third party. And yes, in the case of basically even this project, you do have basically some sort of overseeing body, some oversight within Immutable X, the way they have it functioning. Does that mean it's a bad platform? No. I mean, like I said, I think there's space within blockchain for both of these things to be treated separately and function as such. I just think that there's going to be a larger focus on Bitcoin and privacy coins here moving forward because they have a real use case and there is a real need that people have for them. And I do like seeing that shift back because what we also need to realize is that while NFTs have brought all this new money into cryptocurrency, all these new people, everybody that's new is kind of not as grounded in the principles and the fundamentals of cryptocurrency. And they don't actually understand any of this. A lot of them don't understand private keys. They're just using their crypto.com and Coinbase wallets. They may get all the way into, you know, something like MetaMask if they're utilizing OpenSea, etc. If they make it that far, at least maybe they understand some of their private keys. But then they're utilizing platforms that are highly centralized like uh, you know, OpenSea, they have a lot of vulnerabilities and attack vectors there from scams to hacks going on. And they aren't, they don't necessarily fully understand, like I said, the fundamentals. So luckily, hopefully they move into the MetaMask thing. They start understanding, oh, okay, so these are my keys. This is how this functions. What is the rest of this cryptocurrency stuff about? What, why does, why is it important? etc. And they dig deeper, they dig deeper, they find channels like this one, and they start to understand the point behind it, right? Now, if we're talking about Immutable X, we do need to basically point out that Immutable X has one of the larger card NFT games on it. If you guys aren't familiar with it, that's Gods Unchained. So I am familiar with the platform because I do play Gods Unchained. And on top of that, they do have kind of their own separate wallet that you can move into and even with ETH be able to mint, etc. Big problems with their platform, of course, is there's no real auction house. So doing bidding, etc. doesn't really happen there. 
There's not a lot of outside of God's Unchained uh, NFTs that really have a good floor price. So it's kind of sketchy from that perspective, but let's go ahead and continue on. Immutable X claims that is the first layer two on Ethereum that is geared towards NFTs. For the uninitiated, the uh, layer two is an entire protocol that is built on top of Ethereum blockchain. The protocol interacts with the main blockchain via smart contracts, programs that automatically execute actions when certain conditions are met. Moreover, the Immutable X Mint allows users to create and distribute assets based on ERC721 and ERC20 protocols in a convenient and secure manner. Nonetheless, hidden within GameStop's Form 8K filing for this announcement was a crucial tidbit on Loopring's upcoming major role, Vice, uh, Vice of Vice, the the NFT platform. I actually don't know that term. I got to look that one up. As we detailed in a dedicated post, GameStop indicated on page 22 of the filing that it would integrate the layer two technology of Immutable X as well as Loopring into its upcoming NFT focused platform. Readers should note that Immutable X is a protocol for an NFT marketplace. Since it is non Custodial in nature, GameStop's NFT users would presumably need a wallet to interact with the Immutable X protocol. A potential avenue of partnership might emerge if GameStop chooses to integrate Immutable X's NFT protocol with the Loopring wallet, creating a convenient and all-encompassing solution for its NFT-focused platform. Loopring has recently launched the much-anticipated Layer 2 counterfactual wallets, this is a wallet with limited features that can be deployed directly on the layer two, thereby evading the hefty gas fees associated with the creation of Loop Ring's full-fledged layer one plus layer two smart wallet. As an introductory product offering with limited features, counterfactual wallets offer basis, basic security while allowing users the ability to receive Ether and other tokens on Ethereum layer one. This development was seen by many as a critical component for possible integration with GameStop's NFT platform. Nonetheless, until further details emerge, this particular partnership avenue will remain within the realm of educated conjecture. Loopring's fundamental structure constitutes its strongest bullish thesis. For the uninitiated, rollups are a layer two solution that aggregates and processes transactions outside of Ethereum's main blockchain. These process transactions are then bundled and posted on the main chain, thereby sidestepping Ethereum's scalability problem and the associated prohibitive transaction processing fees, gas fees. Loopring uses a new type of rollup dubbed the ZK rollup, zero knowledge rollups. A zero knowledge proof makes a claim regarding the accuracy of a particular data set without actually sharing that data. This is done by generating proofs based on cryptographic computations for each batch of transactions. Since ZK rollups do not require a challenge period, as the validity proofs have already verified the legitimacy of the underlying transaction data, transactions can be processed very quickly. In fact, Loopring claims that it can process over 2,000 trades per second. This brings us to the crux of the matter. Users can mint NFTs on Loopring's Layer 2 for under $1. However, there are other solutions that allow users to mint NFTs virtually for free. So where's Loopring's decisive advantage? Right, so with layer two and basically NFTs in particular, what you do have is a whole bunch of reduction of cost for the minting of NFTs. This does present a unique problem for investors though that you need to pay attention to, and that's the rug pull. I've been watching a lot of the Crypto Exposed YouTube channel. I highly recommend checking him out. One of the points that he makes to basically stay safe and stay away from rug pulls, especially as it pertains to NFTs that I found interesting, was the fact that if these creators have a higher barrier to entry, say like they're minting on layer one OpenSea Ethereum, they're a lot less likely to rug pull those NFTs uh, from you. And so there is kind of this weird argument of like, we need layer two, it function, we want it to function well, we want everybody to have access to this, to like 
now that you've made the barrier to entry so cheap, there's more opportunity for scammers to scam people within these platforms. I just thought it was an interesting perspective that I would bring up, especially as we start talking about these kind of minting process layer two and so on. Well, readers should understand that whenever platforms give something for free, there are trade-offs involved. So <clears throat> for instance, Vladium layer two allows very cheap minting of NFTs, but stores data off chain. This creates a trade-off between transaction efficiency and security. Of course, off chain data in cryptocurrency is something you want to avoid in my humble opinion. So if I was looking at platforms, I would avoid uh, Validium layer two purely based off of that fact. Loopring has tried to adopt a much more balanced approach to this dilemma. Minting NFTs on Loopring layer two is certainly a lot cheaper than on Ethereum layer one. However, it is still expensive when compared with some of the other NFT focused platforms. To counterbalance this downside, Loopring offers an almost unmatched degree of decentralization and security. That sounds good. Due to the fundamental structure of ZK rollups, in case of security breach on Loopring, users can simply move funds back to Ethereum layer one. This means that user funds are almost never under threat. This is a fundamental differentiating factor that we believe constitutes a major bullish impet uh, uh, impetus uh, for Loopring. Anyways, I gotta go look up that. Another word to go look up. Always here. So. Why are we talking about all this? Well, obviously it looks like we have HUD8 working with gamers. We have GameStop working with NFTs. We're starting to see this integration happen, right? Like people talk about the metaverse. They talk about a VR. They talk about all these different things and how it functions, Web 3.0. And really it's, it's the coming together of all these parts that is going to result in, in my humble opinion, the future. And making sure that we support the projects that are as fundamental as, as possible is going to help shape the future as well. So as users, as participants within the blockchain, I think it's important to try to do the research on everything that's happening and try to sway that into a more decentralization if possible, right? More decentralization, we're, we're trying to protect this world for our kids and future generations, essentially, so they don't end up in, like I said, a, a, a huge, like a centralized form of whatever this may be, right? Like we don't want it to be Facebook's meta controlling everything in a centralized manner where all of the transactions go through there, all of your communications go through there. That's what we want to avoid. And there are little key differences in all of these projects across the board, whether it be storing off-chain data, right? Whether it be huge VCs invested in different platforms, big board members, early initial investments that give basically a group of people at the top the ability to stay at the top. We want to avoid all these types of things so that our children and future generations have the best opportunity to live in a decentralized world where they have more and more opportunity thanks to its decentralization. This has been shown to be obviously pretty good with even just the web 2.0 and web 1.0 where kids these days are learning things much faster because of the decentralization of information and the ease of access to it. So those positive factors have helped society grow and accelerate as far as from an educational perspective. And we want to maintain that. And that's kind of why I talk about it and the differences. As far as the crypto hut eight thing goes, once again, it's just interesting to see them diversify. I'm not really sure that they have this kind of consortium of crypto GPU miners that are lobbying uh, Ethereum necessarily. I haven't seen any updates on that? If we do get some updates, I'll let you know. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show. Every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.